Starting our lesson right at number 10, we have Gordon Cooper and the Green Orb. Gordon Cooper was an American aerospace engineer, US Air Force pilot, and the youngest on Project Mercury, which was the first human space program of the United States. During Gordon Cooper's 22nd solo journey around the Earth, he may have encountered more than just some space junk. Nearing his end of the trip around the planet, he suddenly noticed a green glowing object approaching the Mercury capsule he was flying in. He wasn't the only one to have noticed the object, as a tracking station in Australia even detected that an unidentified object was in fact moving towards the ship. When asked about the occasion, Gordon said, quote, I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting our planet from other planets. Coming at number 9, we have Yang Liwei and the Mysterious Knock. Imagine you're all alone in a tiny spacecraft. It's your first time up there, all alone in endless space, then suddenly you hear a knock as if you're back home. Well, this really happened back in 2003. Yang Liwei became the first astronaut sent into space by the Chinese space program. He described it as someone knocking the body of the spaceship, just as knocking an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. Sound waves cannot travel through space, which makes it very quiet for us. So this is just more reason to question what that sound was. There are other Chinese astronauts between 2005 and 2008 who reported hearing similar sounds and it's not like you can just open the door to check. Maybe the Chinese space program has features that NASA doesn't. Or maybe there is something out there in space trying to get into the spacecraft. We'll never know. At a number 8 spot we have Neil Armstrong may have seen a UFO parking lot. Neil Armstrong is possibly the most famous astronaut of all time. I mean, he was the first to step on the moon and say the famous quote, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He has had worldwide media coverage regarding his moon expedition, but he notes that there was something else he witnessed there that was way more spectacular. I know this one is far-fetched, but according to book Aliens and Man, a synopsis of facts and belief, it's rumored that Armstrong sent a secret message to NASA during the Apollo 11 mission, saying, quote, These babies were huge, sir. Enormous. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there. They're on the moon watching us. He has never spoken about this occasion, maybe because he was bribed to not talk or he was just completely silenced. At a number 7 spot, we have Story Mosgrove saw a space eel. Story Mosgrove is one of the most experienced astronauts in history. He is one of the only ones who have flown in 6 different space flights. So when he's in space and he says something looks off, you best believe it looks off. Musgrave described what he saw as an eel-like creature that was just swimming in space. He said that it was eel-like because of its long whitish figure which closely resembles the eels back on Earth. Also noted that the creature had a unique way of propelling itself throughout space. And the odd thing is, he didn't just see this creature once, but multiple times. So it couldn't have been a hallucination, right? In an interview on sightings in 1995, Musgrave said, quote, the more you fly in space, the more you see an incredible amount of things that just sort of brings to you really a certainty that other living creatures are out there. At a number 6 spot, something James McDivitt can't describe. James McDivitt is an American former test pilot, United States Air Force pilot, aeronautical engineer, and a NASA astronaut who flew in the Gemini and Apollo programs. In one of his expeditions to space, he reported something flying around. The only way he could describe the figure is by calling it a geometrical shape similar to that of a beer can or pop with a something looking like a finger or pencil sticking out of it. He quickly took footage of it, but it did not look like your typical circular UFO. It was moving around as if it was a spacecraft. Right in the humper list, we have a UFO exploding. On May 5th, 1981, retired Russian cosmonaut Vladimir K saw something remarkable from the porthole of Salyut 6. According to Vladimir, at around 6 p.m., when the spacecraft was flying over South Africa, moving towards the Indian Ocean, he saw an elliptical shaped object that was flying along with the spacecraft. From the frontal view, it looked like it would rotate in flight direction. Vladimir said, quote, the object resembles a barbell. I saw it becoming transparent like there was a body inside. At the other end, I saw something like gas discharging, like a reactive object. This is how we drew the sketch of the supposed UFO. Then all of a sudden, two explosions happened on the UFO in which he reported seeing it go down with clouds of smoke behind it. At a number 4 spot, we have Apollo 10 weird music. This was the mission just before Apollo 11 and paved its way. American astronauts Tom Strafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young were sent to the space to orbit and examine the far side of the moon. Only 4 days in their expedition, the, the three began to hear otherworldly organized sound coming from their headsets. They all reported hearing it for a total of 1 hour. They said quote, boy, that sure is weird music. 
They heard this audio only when they're on the far side of the moon, which is out of contact with mission control and the farthest that any human has ever been from Earth. They ended the transcript saying, quote, you know, that was funny. That's just something from outer space, really. Who's going to believe it? All the way at number three spot, we have strange lights. American astronaut Lee Roy Chow was the commander of the International Space Station in 2005. During his exploration, Chow along with his crew claimed to observe a strange set of lights in space, specifically five bright lights. According to Chow, the formation resembled an upside down question mark. He believes to this day he was visited by aliens and even went out saying, quote, I'm skeptical of the claims that we've been visited by aliens from another planet or other dimension, but I don't rule it out 100%. I have an open mind and I do believe there are other life in this universe. Sadly, at our number two spot, we have corpses in space. Before they started manned missions to space, countries including the USSR and the USA first sent a variety of animals to space as test subjects. I know, it's kind of cruel. Examples are Laika the dog, Miss Baker the squirrel monkey, and Ham the chimp, just to name a few. Some of them made it back safely to Earth, while for others, a slight error in calculations meant space became their pet cemetery. Fast forward a few years, and we started flying into space. Astronauts who would go on the suborbital trips can sometimes observe the corpses of these martyrs of human advancement. And while this is sad, coming across the floating corpses of these innocent animals can be a freakishly haunting experience for these astronauts. Finally, at our number one spot, we have a DNA difference. Scott Kelly is an engineer, a naval aviator, and is a former NASA astronaut. And when he was in space, his DNA was literally changing. No, he didn't turn into the Hulk or anything. This is what really happened to him. Scott then took part on a year-long mission aboard the International Space Station. Once Scott returned from his mission, he and his brother Mark were both subjected to a two-year-long study because they were twins and they just wanted to find out the differences they could find from one person being in space and one person being on Earth. After the study concluded, NASA confirmed that 7% of Scott's genes were in fact different. So basically, it was discovered that space changes your DNA. They stated that the changing genes were due to the different demands on the body when he was in space. Well, there we have it, our top 10 scary astronaut encounters. What'd you guys think about this list? Personally, I like the Gordon Cooper with the green orb because this is the one that has always popped up to me when I search about scariest things in space. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Starting off at number 10, aliens. So I'm sure we've all heard the most famous claim that the Area 51 site hosts an alien spacecraft and the bodies of its pilots after they crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. The US government says there were no aliens and the crashed craft was a weather balloon. Some even say they have been abducted by aliens and even experimented on before being returned to Earth. In 1989, a man named Robert Lazar claimed to have seen medical photographs of aliens, the theory that aliens were examined and experimented on. The government never even publicly acknowledged the existence of the base until 2013 with the release of declassified CIA reports. Area 51's association with aliens may have been used as a distraction for the intelligence agencies, or maybe it's true. Now at number nine, man on the moon. It's said that the US government was very desperate to beat Russia in the race to space, essentially. So the US faked the landing on the moon with Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin acting out their mission on a secret film set, which is said to have either taken place in the Hollywood Hills or in Area 51. Theorists have said that Stanley Kubrick could have helped NASA fake it because his 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, proved that the technology existed then to artificially create a space-like set. Here's the supposed video of him landing on the moon. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with the recognizing what an immense feat this is. So like, why is the flag moving? There's no wind in space. Now this part does get a little dark. Three astronauts unfortunately passed away in a fire while testing some equipment for the first moon mission. It's rumored that they were executed by the US government because they were scared that they would say something that would reveal the truth, which is that Neil Armstrong never actually landed on the moon and it was all a movie set in Area 51. Now coming in at number eight, Black Hole. So what if the reason they don't want anyone going into Area 51 is because they're trying to keep us safe from a black hole? Now if you look on Google Maps, you'll see Area 51, but it just looks like a regular government base. 
doesn't look like there's anything out of the ordinary. But I mean, it's the government. If they don't want us to see something on Google Maps, I'm sure they could do it. People talk about black holes in space, but what about one on Earth? The theory is that a small hole in the ground started to open back in the 1940s. So they built Area 51 in hopes of containing it. In 2015, CERN admitted that they tried to create tiny black holes so scientists can study antimatter. But what if one day it just starts growing and growing and they can't contain it? And our world just gets completely sucked up by it and then poof! <laughs> All gone. Here at number seven, time travel. So as I said before, the US government didn't confirm Area 51's existence until 2013. Well, I found a news video from 1989 of a radio show of a man claiming to be from 2019. He was saying during the radio show how in 2019, people are talking about storming Area 51. The host on the radio show then asks about what is Area 51. The man also talks about Facebook, which again had not been invented yet until 2003 when it was called FaceMash till 2004 when they changed the name to Facebook. The man said he didn't want to storm the base, but there were tons of shooting sounds and tons of people and everyone was screaming and running. But he said he went to the base anyway to find shelter from all the shooting. He ended up climbing into a trap door to hide. He then started to hear weird sounds and a pain in his chest and saw what he described as a bright liquid light. And then he woke up in an abandoned school building in Ohio and realized it was the year 1971. So what do you guys think? Is it a hoax or do you think it's real? Taking spot number six, another dimension. So this one kind of gives me like Hawkins Lab vibes. And fun fact, the experiments that went on in Hawkins Lab in the show Stranger Things is actually based on a true story. Even though the show was based on experiments done on people, like the ones done on Eleven. The real government project was called MK Ultra. It was created by the CIA in 1953 with the aim of developing mind control techniques that could give America an advantage against Russia in the Cold War. A lot of these Area 51 theories seem to have all kind of taken place around the Cold War. But what if underneath Area 51 they've created a gate to another dimension, like the Upside Down? Or maybe something else kind of like the last one with time travel too. What if there's a time riff opened underneath Area 51? Halfway number five, supernatural beings. This one also kind of follows the same concept of aliens being experimented on. What if there's things like vampires or werewolves being experimented on? Or zombies? What if they were trying to bring people back from the dead or experimenting on humans to make us live longer? This one's kind of a stretch because there isn't really any sources or evidence to back it up. But if some people can believe aliens, what about other non-human entities being hidden in Area 51? Now at number four, simulations. Some, well, I guess a lot of people believe that we are in a simulation and people also believe that to exit the simulation, they need to go inside Area 51. The theory is that the government wants to keep controlling us. So that's why anyone who tries to go into Area 51 will be shot on sight. Or there's also another part of this. I've read about a game called Soma. In it, a comet hits Earth and effectively exterminates all life on land. The only human survivors were in an undersea facility and came up with the strategy of downloading their consciousness into a simulation and launching that computer, running the simulation into space on a satellite that will orbit the sun, keeping the extinct human race alive, but in a simulation. So what if they are testing things like this in Area 51? so that if something ever destroys Earth, our consciousness can still live if our bodies can't. But of course, they wouldn't do this for everyone. They would just do it for doctors and scientists and architects, so that if the consciousness was ever put into a body again, those people would know how to restart a new world, if that makes sense. Coming in at number three, advanced technology. This one kind of ties into the alien theory also. So this one is that a UFO crashed at the Area 51 site, and while others were experimenting on the aliens, some workers in Area 51 took apart the UFO to create better planes during the Cold War. Coincidentally, the U-2 was created and tested in Area 51. The U-2 is a single-seat, high-altitude jet aircraft flown by the United States for intelligence gathering, surveillance, and reconnaissance. It's perhaps the most famous spy plane ever built. The U-2, also known as the Dragon Lady, has been in service since 1956 which again, coincidentally, was the same year it was theorized that a UFO had crashed in Area 51. U2 was also said to be, quote, ahead of its time. Or what about making planes stealth to help in military fights when they don't want bomber planes to be detected? So did they make anything else advanced other than the plane? Here at number two, UFOs. There are claims that have seen UFOs above or near Area 51. In 1989, Robert Lazar, who we talked about number 10, also claimed he worked on alien technology inside Area 51, and that the government used the facility to examine UFOs. However, this man has been caught lying about other things, 
So is this one a lie too, or do you think he's telling the truth this time? Taking our number one spot, controlling weather. Sources say that Area 51 has machines that can control weather. Other theories accuse CERN of causing earthquakes by sending plasma from Switzerland to Italy at very high speeds and opening portals into hell or other dimensions, and shifting the world into an alternate timeline. The American government even admitted to experimenting in weather control before. In the late 1940s, the U.S. Army Signal Corps, the Office of Naval Research, and the Air Force worked with General Electric in an attempt to control a hurricane. And then from 1962 to 1983, ran Project Storm Fury, where they used silver iodide to weaken cyclones. Now you may be thinking, oh, what's so scary about all this? Well, what if whatever's inside Area 51 ever gets out? At a number 10 spot, we have the Roswell accident. This case is probably one of the most well-known cases, but it is said that the remains of the crash UFO remains inside of Area 51. For those who have no idea about the Roswell incident, the story goes that on July 8, 1947, a UFO was spotted by several people in the area of Roswell, New Mexico. One of these people included a rancher named W.W. W. Brazel. Brazel will report the sightings immediately to the local authorities, who then sent out a team to investigate. The team arrived at the crash site and found a large circular object that was unlike any other they had seen before. At first, the authorities believed the UFO was a weather balloon, but they soon realized that the object was made of some kind of metallic material that was completely unlike anything that had ever been seen before. They had also found strange symbols and markings on the object, which further fueled speculation about its origins. The authorities were tight-lipped about the incident, and it wasn't until several days later that the media got wind of what had happened. Soon, the story of the UFO crash of Roswell made headlines around the world, with many people speculating about the possible origins of the strange object, but in the end, there is no solid evidence if there ever was an alien here, but apparently they're in Area 51. Number 9, we have Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar is a controversial figure in the world of UFO enthusiasts. This is because he claimed to have worked on reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology at a site called S4, which is located inside of Area 51. In his interviews, Lazar claimed to have seen nine flying saucers of extraterrestrial origin at S4, and he had also said that the technology used for propulsion was based on the manipulation of gravity, which cannot be done. Many of you will find this story intriguing because of the secrecy surrounding Area 51. However, the mainstream scientific community had largely dismissed his claims, and the US government had not officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51 at that time, or any sort of connection to extraterrestrial technology. Obviously. Additionally, many of the people he named as colleagues and supervisors at S4 had denied knowing him or working with him. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the idea these flying saucers are in Area 51 has been up for debate. Do you believe his claims, or is he just another guy looking for attention? Or was this some sort of top secret American aircraft no one knows about? Who knows? Number eight, weather control. Since many people believe that Area 51 produces state of the art inventions, they also believe that they have a device that has the ability to control the weather. Yeah. And this theory has been speculated among Americans for years. And I bet most of you believe in this theory as well. To give more evidence to this, this wouldn't be the first time America dipped their toes in weather alternating projects. Introducing Project Storm Fury. Project Storm Fury was a large scale research project conducted by the US government in the 1960s and 70s with the goal of improving the understanding and ability to predict and control hurricanes. The project was carried out by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and involved a team of researchers who conducted a series of experiments in which various weather modification techniques were used in an attempt to weaken hurricanes as they approached land. These techniques included seeding the clouds of a hurricane with silver iodide in order to stimulate the formation of rain and disrupt the storm circulation, as well as flying aircraft into the eye walls of hurricanes to gather data and perform other experiments. So if Area 51 produced high tech like many believe, there is no doubt whether manipulation device would exist in this place. At our number 7 spot, we have Interrogation Center. Many people claim that Area 51 is a place the US government interrogated an alien species, and they also say they keep them in the underground facilities below. 
Supposed Area 51 scientist Bob Lazar strengthens this argument as well. He claims to have remembered catching a monetary glimpse of a small gray extraterrestrial between two guys wearing white coats while being led down a hallway at S4. He said he saw this through a tiny window. Then when he tried to get a closer look, a guard pushed him and ordered him to stop gazing and continue moving. Then another supposed worker of Area 51 named Victor claimed to have witnessed an alien interrogation in a 1997 radio broadcast. In the same interview, he supplied a blurry image that shows a human officer attempting to speak telepathically with a little extraterrestrial pilot who had been shot down by the American military. The footage is in the documentary named Area 51 The Alien Interview which is in 1997 and he explains the encounter in much detail. So if you want a better understanding, go check that out. Number 6, we have the Majestic 12. Apart from all alien conspiracies going on in Area 51, another group of people believe that Area 51 is the home for a secret one world government. The government is known as the Majestic 12. Majestic 12, known as MJ-12 or Magic 12, is the name of an alleged secret committee of scientists, military leaders, and government officials that were supposedly formed in 1947 by the executive order of President Harry S. Truman. The name Majestic 12 comes from the set of documents that were allegedly leaked in 1984 which claimed to be a briefing on the formation of the group. The purpose of the group was to investigate UFO sightings and recover any sort of extraterrestrial technology that was found, or that's what they want you to think. The existence of this group has never been confirmed. Some people believe that the group was formed to cover up the truth about aliens, while others believe that it was a hoax created to mislead the public. However, these documents have been extensively studied and widely believed to be fraudulent. To go further in this rabbit hole and go back to aliens, others believe that the whole reason for Majestic 12 was to set up a trade opportunity with aliens, in which they already have. In the Humphrey list, we have the home of the black helicopters. Area 51 is known to have extremely advanced vehicles, but many people suggest that they also contain black helicopters. According to the black helicopter theory, shady government agencies are using these black helicopters to carry out secret operations, such as surveillance and military operations, in an effort to control and manipulate the entire population. Some even believe that these helicopters are equipped with advanced technology such as mind control devices and are being used to carry out experiments on unsuspecting civilians. Others suggest these helicopters have the ability to fill an entire cloud with poisonous gases and all sorts of other toxins. And if this did exist, this wouldn't be the first time the US government hid their aircraft projects. Because Area 51 actually produced radar evading stealth technology utilized by the MH60 Black Hawk helicopters in the attack on Osama bin Laden in the early 1990s. At a number four spot, we have Travis Walton. Alien abduction time. So in 1975, Travis Walton was working as a logger in Arizona when he claimed to have been abducted by a UFO. He was with a group of other loggers at the time and they had all witnessed the UFO before it whisked him away. After being missing for five days, Walton reappeared with a strange story of having been taken aboard the UFO and subjected to a series of medical examinations by the aliens. He claimed he was taken to a somewhat operation room with three short bald headed figures where he started to panic and fight them off. And this is when a human looking figure took him to another room where he passed out and then all of a sudden reappeared on a highway completely nude. The incident gained widespread attention and was even investigated by the US Air Force. Many people were skeptical of Walton's story and some had even suggested that he may be fabricating the whole thing. However, the other loggers who were there with Walton at the time of the incident all swore that they saw the UFO and believed that Walton was telling the truth. The story was later made into a book and film named Fire in the Sky in 1993. So go check it out. And to this day, people are still divided on the truth of Walton's story. And the incident remains one of the most well-known UFO abduction cases in history. Number three, we have a fake moon landing. It is said that the US government was very desperate to beat Russia in the race to space. This theory essentially states that the US faked the landing on the moon with Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin acting out their mission on a secret film set, which is said to have taken place in the Hollywood Hills or Area 51. Theorists have said that filmmaker Stanley Kubrick could have helped NASA fake it because of his 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, which proved that the technology existed to then artificially create a space-like set. Here is a supposed video of him landing on the moon. So why is this flag moving? There is no wind in space. That's the biggest question, right? Now this next part is a little bit dark. So apparently Virgil I. Grissom 
Edward H. White, Roger B. Shafi were three astronauts who died in a fire while testing some equipment for the first moon mission. It's rumored that they were executed by the US government because they were scared that they would say something that would reveal the truth, which is that Neil Armstrong never actually landed on the moon and it was all a movie set in Area 51. Number two, time travel. There's a news video from 1989 of a radio show of a man claiming to be from the year 2019. He says during the radio show how in 2019, people were talking about about storming Area 51. Remember what I talked about earlier? The host on the radio show then asked, what is Area 51? The man also talks about Facebook, which again had not been invented till 2003, when it was called Face Smash till 2004, when they changed the name to Facebook. The man said he didn't want to storm the base and there were shooting sounds and tons of people and everyone was screaming and running. But he said he went into the base anyway to find shelter from all the shooting. And he ended up climbing into a trap door to hide. He started to hear weird noises and felt pain coming out of his chest and saw what he described as a bright liquid light. And then he woke up in an abandoned school building in Ohio and he realized it was the year 1971. So what do you guys think, hoax or real? At a number one spot, we have Operation Plum Bob. Operation Plum Bob was a series of nuclear tests conducted by the United States at the Nevada test site in 1957. The tests were a key part of the US nuclear weapons program and were designed to provide data on the effects of nuclear explosions and to develop new weapon designs. The test was the largest and most controversial series of nuclear tests ever conducted by the US. And it also included a number of significant firsts. The first nuclear powered rocket was tested as part of Operation Plum Bob, as, as was the first airdrop of a nuclear weapon from an airplane. The tests were highly secretive and the US government went to great lengths to keep the details of the test hidden from the public. Despite this, the test had a major impact on the surrounding area and many people living near the Nevada test site were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Despite the controversy surrounding this operation, it was considered a success by the US government and provided valuable data on the effects of nuclear weapons. However, it also served as a reminder of the destructive power of these weapons and the need for caution and restraint in their use. Starting off at number 10, we have never landed on the moon. So the theory starts off with people thinking that Neil Armstrong, the guy who supposedly stepped on the moon for the first time and placed the American flag, never actually did so. With only photos and videos of the mission only available through NASA, there's no actual verification that the first landing on the moon was ever really real. Take a look at this video and tell me what you think is wrong with it, if anything. Every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure they too join with the in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Okay, so we all saw that now. Perfect. Now, the main proof that people have is that in the video it shows the flag blowing in the wind. Space doesn't really have wind. Theorists have even said that the filmmaker Stanley Kubrick could have helped NASA fake it because his 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey, proved that the technology existed then to artificially create a space-like set. Coming in at number nine is white holes. White holes are pretty much the same thing as a black hole, but opposite, I guess? So with a black hole, everything that enters can't escape. Well, with a white hole, nothing can enter at all. White holes have been said to have been surrounded by a ring of dust and gas and look exactly like a black hole. Someone said that a black hole's event horizon is a sphere of no return. A white hole's event horizon is a boundary of no admission. How NASA described white holes was by playing a video of a black hole backwards, but no one knows how a white hole forms. Someone said, a black hole cordones off its bit of space when a star collapses into a tiny volume, but playing the video backwards doesn't make physical sense. I think they are just saying it's different, but in more complex terms, but I have no idea. Stay in school, kids. Take our number eight spot, we have Flat Earth. Very controversial, I know. But remember, these are all just legends. There were so many people that had lots of different ideas about the shape of the Earth. The Babylonians thought the Earth was hollow to provide space for the underworld. The Egyptians thought the earth was a four-cornered square with mountains at the edge supporting the vault of the sky. There were people that thought the earth was round and the early Christian church accepted it, but a few within the church pointed out that the Bible speaks of the four corners of the earth. 
Basically, most of the proof that they had came from the Bible, so some of it was believe what you want and some of it was science. Now at number seven is supernovas. A supernova happens when a star explodes. Although supernovas aren't really legend, they also kinda are because the dust in space blocks our view from them. So how do we really know if they are real? However, in 1604, Johannes Kelper discovered the last known observed supernova in the Milky Way. NASA's Chandra telescope discovered the remains of a more recent supernova, which exploded in the Milky Way more than 100 years ago. Apparently, one kind of supernova has shown scientists that we live in an expanding universe, one that is forever growing at a rapid pace. Moving on to number six, we have Black Hole Sagittarius A. Ooh, my zodiac sign, I feel so proud. The Event Horizon Telescope, EHT, captured an image of what looks like a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy that is feeding on hydrogen gas. They estimated it to have a mass that was 4.3 million times the mass of our sun. Since the size of the event horizon is connected to the mass of the black hole, people were then able to make predictions and create theories. Someone had said, the power of imaging the black hole's ring is that if you know the mass and distance to the black hole, then you can use that to compare to theory. The new image shows that the size of Sagittarius A's event horizon is 51.8 micro arc seconds. I think basically saying it's really fast moving and big? It's said that it's even moving with turbulent energy. Okay, maybe now I don't feel so proud about my zodiac sign. Let's move on, shall we? Now at number five with extraterrestrial life. The size of the universe is quite big, approximately 100 billion stars in just the Milky Way alone which is our galaxy for those of you who don't know. It's estimated that there are 100 billion galaxies of about the same size as ours that are scattered around deep space. Mars does remain the best planet for a discovery of extraterrestrial life. Four billion years ago, Mars may have even been better for life than the Earth. In 1998, NASA scientists found what may have been fossilized ancient Martian bacteria in a meteorite that came from the planet's surface. The Mars rock drifted through space for millions of years until finally crashing into Antarctica. So as much as there is not really a lot of scientific evidence that there is extraterrestrial life, we do have these videos on the internet. So who really knows? Now at number four is the multiverse. Now if you're a Marvel fan like me, you probably already know about this one, or if you haven't gotten a chance to see the new Doctor Strange movie, I'll explain it. So in the theory of the Big Bang, in order to explain the uniformity of the CMB, it's necessary to claim an early seed of super fast expansion known as inflation. They believe that the universe went through a very quick but dramatic period of inflation, expanding faster than the speed of light and doubling in size around a hundred times more. Some scientists think that when our universe dropped out of the inflation phase, it was just one tiny bubble in a big sea of inflating space. In the theory called eternal inflation, other bubble universes are constantly popping up in other parts of the inflammatory sea, with the whole group making up a multiverse. The multiverse is essentially a theory about universes with versions of us in them but theirs could run totally different than ours, and yourself in the other universes could be different as well. Personality-wise, their style, how they look. They would still look like you, but they could be very different and same with the universe. Some might have stronger gravity or a different speed of light, yeah, etc. I hope that makes sense. Here at number three is the world actually ended in 2012 or in 2020. Remember in 2012 when panic spread across the world as people thought the world was going to end on December 21st? And then the world didn't end? People went on with their lives and pretty much forgot about all of that. It's a time usually remembered by comments like, oh, remember when the world was supposed to end and then didn't or did it? Majority of this comes from a popular Twitter thread claiming that the world actually ended in 2012. The thread claims that CERN, a European organization for nuclear research that also operates the largest particle physics laboratory in the world, created a black hole that inhaled the world. And then the scientists placed us all in a simulation. They back up their statements by saying that since then, the world has gotten more chaotic and that time moves quicker now. Which, I mean, if you look at all the chaotic things that have happened in the past 10 years, a pandemic, 
Trump, murder hornets, World War III. Some people instead believe that the world ended in 2020. Now at number two, we have God Particle. Now we all remember CERN from the last one, right? So CERN started off in 1954 and has since grown into 22 member states and has made ton of discoveries, including the Higgs boson or God Particle and invention of the World Wide Web. People feared that when CERN turned on the Large Hardened Collider, the largest machine in the world, used to smash subatomic particles together, that it would destroy Earth. So far, it has not, or so we think. When the Collider was experiencing setbacks and delays in the early 2000s, some people thought that a time traveler from the future was returning to the past to purposely sabotage it in order to prevent some disaster. This time traveler tried everything, including a time traveling bird with a baguette, but the collider was turned on in 2012 anyway. 2012. You know, the year that apparently the world ended in? And last but not least, taking our number one spot, we have the Big Bang. The Big Bang, as most of you probably know, is the theory about how our universe came to be. There's not tons of information on how it actually came to be, but this is what I found. Our universe was born about 13.7 billion years ago in a massive expansion that blew up space like a big balloon. That is basically the Big Bang Theory, which virtually all cosmologists and theoretical physicists support. The evidence supporting the idea is extensive, but we do know that the universe is still expanding even now. It's said that our universe began with a singularity, a point of infinite density and temperature, which is difficult for our minds to grasp. However, this may not accurately reflect reality. Researchers say because the singularity idea is based on Einstein's theory of general relativity. So the very beginning of the universe remains pretty foggy. Starting at number 10, mad cow disease. Now despite the funny name, this one's actually kind of freaky. Scientists found out that many people may be silent carriers from mad cow disease and won't know for another decade or so. Mad cow disease from the 1980s to 1990s was due to cows being fed the remains of other animals. People then ate their beef and consumed prions a protein that can destroy the human brain. It's thought that many people still might carry prions, but won't know until they start experiencing the symptoms of Kreutzfeldt Jacob disease, sorry if I mispronounced that, which might be 10 to 50 years after consuming the contaminated meat. You can also contract the prions from blood transfusions, which is why so many UK citizens from that time period still aren't allowed to donate blood. Once the symptoms begin, cognitive impairment, memory loss, hallucinations, etc., you usually pass within months and there is no cure or treatment. Definitively determined. The widely accepted theory is that BSE is caused by changes in the prion protein, PRP, found in highest concentrations in the plasma membrane of neurons. Now at number nine, nuclear waste. Back in 1946 to 58, the US tested 60 nuclear weapons on the Marshall Islands and buried the nuclear leftover waste and soil in a 30 foot deep cavern, sealing it with a concrete dome. Scientists discovered the dome is cracking and now it's leaking into the ocean and it's not fixing itself. And the people responsible are essentially ignoring it or saying it's not their problem. This is just making our planet worse for people. And people that swim in the ocean, it's very dangerous and life-threatening. Here at number eight, artificial general intelligence. In other words, a digital computer that is superhuman in all cognitive tasks. Humans are imbued by evolution with a sort of general learning algorithm, but it's running on a very slow biological computer with low input or output speed, talking, tapping thumbs, reading, etc. Once we can implant that algorithm in silicone, a computer chip, there's a good chance it'll be superhuman in a matter of days or less. Sort of on the level of intelligence gap you might feel between you and a mosquito. Coming in at number seven, mass extinction. Paleontologists have identified five points in Earth's history when, for whatever reason, asteroid impacts, volcanic eruptions, and atmospheric changes are the main suspects. Mass extinctions eliminated many or most species. The concept of extinction took a while to sink in. Thomas Jefferson saw mastodon bones from Kentucky, for example, and concluded that the giant animals must still be living somewhere in the interior of the continent. Today, according to many biologists, we are in the midst of a sixth great extinction. Mastodons may have been some of the earliest victims, as humans moved from continent to continent. Large animals that have thrived for millions of years began to disappear. Mastodons in North America, giant kangaroos in Australia, and dwarf elephants in Europe. Whatever the cause of 
of this early wave of extinctions. Humans are driving modern extinctions by hunting, destroying habitat, introducing invasive species, and inadvertently spreading diseases. Now at number six, blood falls. Discovered over a century ago, it took 100 years before British scientists knew this was a living organism, which went from green to red as sunlight hit it, which darkened the snow and ice, bringing on an unnatural melt. The discovery came at the hands of a team of scientists, including National Geographic emerging explorer Aaron C. Petit, located in Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys. The falls pour from Taylor Glacier, and the liquid bubbles up from the fissures in the glacier surface. The flow was previously a mystery, as the mean temperatures is 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or 17 degrees Celsius. The organisms now cover about half of the Antarctic, accelerating climate change and seemingly immune to interference. Halfway at number five, bees disappearing. So most people already know that our honeybees are endangered, and we need honeybees to survive. But what some people don't know is that in a study published in the journal Cell Press, it reported more than 25% of known bee species have disappeared from the public record over the last 30 years. Years. The researchers characterized the change in the total number of species collected worldwide as a sharp decline. Loss of habitat, agriculture practices, biodiversity loss, and parasites are all possible culprits driving bee decline. The study notes that these roughly 20,000 bee species are most of the important group of insect pollinators on Earth, pollinating 85% of all cultivated crops. Now at number four, skull. So this one is pretty short, but I thought I'd include it anyway because it's terrifying. Seven large skeletons were found in the 1880s, all with the same skull as this. Like what? It looks like a human skull, but what are those horn looking things? It is theorized that the skull came from a living thing resembling a human, but was more animal-like. Kinda how apes developed into people. Others think it's from some beast-like demon who hunted and ate people. Here at number three, real life Thanos snap. The Higgs boson, which was hypothesized decades ago, was discovered through the Large Hadron Collider. It's a real life discovery that proved that it's what gives mass to everything. But there is a non-zero chance that a Higgs boson can drop to a lower energy state. And because of the law of entropy, it's the preferred state to decay to a lower energy state if possible. The influence of a low energy state boson would kick off a chain reaction, causing other Higgs bosons to drop to a lower energy state. The problem with this is that if a Higgs boson drops to a lower energy state, then it can't give mass to things anymore, which has universal implications when mass doesn't have mass anymore. It's all theorized that the small probability of this occurring could lead to a circumstance where the universe as we know it disappears. Essentially, it would occur like an absolute void progressing through the universe, low energy state Higgs boson inf infecting any other Higgs bosons they come across. It causes everything to disappear in the universe, but only at the speed of light rather than instantaneously. Moving on to number two, Mars water. A study was published earlier this year in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, reconstructing the red planet's early history, using data from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to look back onto the planet's history. Kite and his colleagues proposed clouds once warmed the planet, just enough to sustain patches of liquid water at the surface. This one is pretty interesting because this means Mars could possibly be habitable, and with our planet slowly dying, this means later generations might live on Mars. Mars colonized is now actually conceivable, but it would take a bit more than a few drops of water. Taking our number one spot, pineapple. Now I know this one sounds silly, but when I read it, my jaw literally dropped. Scientists have discovered that pineapple is the only fruit in the whole world which contains the enzyme called bromelain. Bromelain is an enzyme which breaks down protein. Considering that 16% of the human body is made up of protein, mostly in our flesh, it means that bromelain in pineapples can actually break down protein in our flesh, essentially eating us from the inside. However, most of the enzymes are thankfully destroyed by the ass in our stomach, so pineapple won't actually pose too much of a threat to your life, although this is often used as a reason to explain why pineapple farmers have no fingerprints. Constant physical interaction with pineapples has worn them off, though this is not scientifically proven yet. Just a hypothesis. 